Hello and welcome back. Kamal here, who is a CR7 fanboy and is obviously going to be really happy today. And that is the case. I'm quite happy with my boy Ronaldo and Portugal walking away with the win. But at the same time, I do feel kind of sad for the Czech Republic because they played so well. They defended quite brilliantly throughout the match. And it is heartbreaking that the only two defensive lapses they had are what cost them the game. But that is, of course, the beautiful game. It is ruthless more often than not and today we have this absolute banger of an integral it's the double integral from 0 to 1 of log x times log y times log 1 minus x times y dx dy the solution development is going to be really really elegant and the final result is just it's gorgeous it is absolutely beautiful and almost too good to be true i know that i know i say that for a lot of my integrals but I am almost never exaggerating anything. I truly mean it when I say that the result is simply gorgeous. It is going to be quite amazing. It's what we're working towards now. So I'm going to stop talking about the result and actually start solving for that result. So to begin, we do have log x and we do have log y, but we also have log 1 minus x times y. And we can expand the logarithm here using a nice series expansion where log 1 minus z can be expanded as the negative of the sum over the positive integers k of z to the k divided by k provided the absolute value of z is less than 1. And this is valid for the variable x times y on the interval from 0 to 1. Okay, cool. So this implies that we have log 1 minus x times y equal to the negative of the sum over k. Terribly sorry about that. Still not getting any better at writing the sigma, although I have become a sigma. Horrible dad joke. And now we have x to the k times y to the k divided by k. And this implies that the target integral i is now the double integral from 0 to 1 of log x, wait a minute, we have log y here and we're integrating first with respect to x, so we might as well take the log y term outside the integration with respect to x operator, and now we have the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times the sum, terribly sorry about that again, the sum over k of x to the k, again terribly sorry, x to the k times y to the k divided by k integration first with with respect to x and then with respect to y. Notice that we have this log x term which is independent of the index variable k so we can take it inside the summation operator and get the negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of log y times the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of x to the k times log x divided by k times y to the k dx dy. We can now switch up the order of the integration and summation operators to get negative integral 0 to 1 of log y times the sum over k of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k times log x divided by k times y to the k dx dy. And the 1 over k term is independent of the index variable x, independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating. So that means we can take it outside the integration operator and we have negative integral 0 to 1 of log y times the sum over k. And we also have y to the k which is independent of x. So we have y to the k by k times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k times log x dx dy. And this integral here is pretty easy to solve. I have a result derived on my Instagram. I'll link that in the description box. Where the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n times log to the n, terribly sorry about that, log to the n of x dx equals negative 1 to the n times gamma n plus 1 divided by m plus 1 to the n plus 1. And in this case, of course, we have n equal to 1 and we have m equal to k. So this implies that the target integral equals negative integral 0 to 1 
And we can also take this log y term inside the summation operator so that we have the sum over k of y to the k times log y divided by k times what is the result? It's negative 1 to the 1 times gamma 2, which is, of course, again, going to be equal to 1. And then we have k plus 1 squared dy. Okay, cool. So the negative 1 cancels out with a negative outside. And then we're left with the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of y to the k times log y divided by k times k plus 1 squared dy. Again, we switch up the order of the operators, and then we get the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to 1. And again, we have these terms independent of y, so we have 1 by k times k plus 1 squared here, and we have the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the k times log y dy. And this is the identical to the integral with respect to x. So we have the sum over k of what exactly would we get? We would have negative 1, gamma 2 again being 1, and we have k plus 1 squared in the denominator. So this thing is what we are left with. We have k plus 1 to the fourth power now in the denominator. Now we could go for a partial fraction decomposition, but there's something more fun. We have 1 upstairs, which we can expand as k plus 1 minus 1, correct? No, wait, it's k plus 1 minus k. Yeah, that's about right. And expanding this and using the linearity of the summation operator, we have negative sum over k of the k plus 1 cancels out. We're left with 1 by k times k plus 1 cubed, plus sign now sum over k of... 1 by k plus 1 to the fourth power. So we're just chopping off k plus 1s now. Repeating this gives us negative sum over k of, let's see, 1 by k times k plus 1 squared plus the sum over k of 1 by k plus 1 cubed. And we have the same thing as above. And repeating this one more time, would give us negative sum over k of 1 by k times k plus 1 plus the sum over k of 1 by k plus 1 squared. And again, we have those same couple of terms. And finally, we would have negative sum over k. Let's see, we're left with 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 1 yeah, that's about right. Okay, cool. Now, what exactly is this thing? Well, this would be the Riemann zeta function at 3, but it's missing the leading term of 1. So that means this is going to be zeta 3. No, this is zeta 2 plus 1. Terribly sorry about that. We have zeta 3 up and zeta 4 above that, all of them missing a term of 1. So that means I have this plus sign. We have zeta 2 plus zeta 3 plus zeta 4. Each is missing a 1, so we have minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Okay, cool. And this here is a telescoping series, of course, which equals the negative of the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 1 third and so on and so forth. We get to 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. We see lots of cancellations. Great. And as n tends to infinity, the last term just goes to 0. And we have a negative 3 here. And we have these zeta functions that look absolutely gorgeous. No, I'm not expanding zeta 2 and zeta 4. I'm just leaving it in this form. Wow. And that means what's left here is going to be negative 1. So the target integral i equals, again, terribly sorry about that. Why cannot I write this properly at the first attempt? Zeta 2 plus zeta 3 plus zeta 4. I thought I was getting better. Plus zeta 4, absolutely gorgeous, minus 4. This is beautiful. This is absolutely brilliant. We have this train of zetas. 
wow, I really did enjoy this solution development and I hope you enjoyed the video as well. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do comment and share to help promote the channel. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well for some important write-ups that I often use in my videos. And in case you like the effort I'm putting into my work, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.